So it's time for me to welcome our last speaker of this track on stage. And I'm very excited to announce him to you. He is a senior project manager and he will telling you more about project management and specifically about the added value of project management. So without further ado, let's get started and give it up for Paul Janus. Um, hi all. I'm really excited to be here today because I'm also a debutant. Uh, I will be speaking for the first time. And you look a bit tired, but I get it that it's difficult to party for three nights long. And um, today I'll be talking about something different, which is project management. I haven't seen actually any presentations talking about project management. And I will look at this from the point of view of giving you the added value and um, making it as making it a competitive edge. So, a few words about me. Uh, I'm Paweł Janusz, as you know. I'm from Poland. I'm a senior project manager at Awesome Studio and also a team leader there. And personally, I'm just a guy who loves traveling everywhere where I don't know those places. So, this is probably why I'm also here. Um, and uh, yeah, and I will do several things today. I will, first of all, ask you a question. Then I will talk about project failure. I will surprise you, or at least I hope so. Uh, throw some numbers at you. Uh, I will talk about the, the advantage of project management, give you a little gift, take a selfie if I don't forget, and wave goodbye. So let's start with the interesting part. So the question. The question is whether, VAPU, uh, whether project management, VAPU, and a small city in Poland have something in common. By looking at your faces, you have no clue what I'm talking about. And no worry, because I don't know either. Um, the thing is that you probably may know something about those bullet points and what they have something, what they have in common. So let's start with the first one: lack of clear goals, <coughs> poorly defined project scope, unrealistic deadline, lack of planning, lack of risk management, unskilled team members, poor resource planning, change of scope, uh, poor communication, lack of monitoring um, and control, choice of technology, and so on and so on. The list is pretty long. I, again, think that you don't know. <laughs> so uh, I will give you a clue. Maybe right now. Uh, sorry. So if you thought about project failure, you're right. Basically, this is, those are the most commonly occurring reasons behind project failure. And the various changes, but basically they will be always the same, no matter who you ask, where you look for. And uh, you could probably come up with some new. But have you noticed something uh, a bit strange about this list? And now I will give you the clue, sorry. Again, if not, I will respond to this. Um, when you look at this list, they are not some kind of technical obstacles, limitations. Uh, they are purely related to project management and soft skills. And well, I know it looks like digging my own grave because I'm a project manager. But well, here I am to share some of my experiences. Um, so uh, how is that that even Egyptians knew how to build pyramids, uh, but we forgot how to lead the projects, how to manage them? I don't think it's particularly because we forgot how to do it, but there are three reasons why we do not do it perfectly. First one is that there is no visible value of project management. Everybody prefers having developer code the website. Everybody will see a lovely website. What ask for more? Then we've got the uh, everybody can do it attitude. And believe me, I've seen ladies from financial department leading project, and this is not something that you want to do. And the last one is soft skills, of course, because if we cannot agree with our partner what we are going to eat in the evening, how are we supposed to talk to our client that we just exceeded the budget midway the project? So those are the three reasons. And now the answer how to deal with all this stuff is counterintuitive counter because um, the answer is project management. You have to apply project management, proper project management, in order to get it done. Um, so I thought about, I will do some research and see whether there's anything in the internet telling about the value added by the project management. And I stumbled upon a research done by PMI Institute, which is a project management institute 
quite huge organization and they interviewed uh, 100 free organization in 2001 and they asked them about whether the initiatives that they took in the past two years be were beneficial for the organization. And what is quite interesting, 94% of people told that they were. And those initiatives were, for example, implementation of planning at all or budgeting or any kind of creation of processes related to project management. And I asked myself, okay, this is quite nice, but what happened then? You, sh you should provide it with some numbers. And they, yeah, this is the part where I throw some numbers at you. And ROI improved, uh, also sales improved, uh, customer satisfaction, budget performance, schedule performance, employees uh, satisfaction and productivity. So they are just numbers and they are great. They look perfectly on, on paper. And I thought like, um, okay, how they did that, that those numbers look like this. And when I did dive deeper into the research, what I found out is there's a very basic stuff that they did. What they did is they created a process, a uh, structured, repeatable process of planning, executing, controlling, and closing projects so they do not have to rely on luck. And for, by luck, for example, I mean project manager because it can be good or not. And some of you may say, oh, stop it, it's just a survey. And well, you are technically right because this one's also pretty damn old, almost as old as internet. Um, but well, you cannot argue with your clients. But so I followed my gut feeling and I went to some popular review pages where clients review agencies. And I looked at the top list of those agencies. And what is really interesting is that they indeed mention project management as a something crucial for the delivery of the project, uh, not in some kind of project management specific uh, question, but in the feedback summary. So it is something. And what they wrote is that, well, the project managers exemplary, they met the deadline, they were responsive, accommodating, well, communicating brilliantly, and so on, and so on, and so on. And this is just a few examples. And I thought that's really strange because I don't know if anybody of you have seen a client that comes to an agency and asks for project manager that will deliver the project. No, everybody, you know, asks for a well-designed website that will, will, that will uh, win all of the possible awards, of course, done yesterday and below 30K, for example. And this comes to a conclusion that project management is something that Nobody asked for, but everybody needed it. So uh, based on that, we know that the project management is extremely important, although it's marginalized very often. How can we make sure that our projects are almost failure-proof? Because I'm thinking about also the human factor, for example, the project manager. Um, and there are two steps. First one is very difficult for me. And the second one is a bit less difficult. Um, and it will be hiring the good project manager. You have to do it. The lady from financial department won't do it, believe me. She will try her best, but it's not the point. And the second one is, right now it will be very easy, but further down the road you will see it uh, will require a lot of work. You just scan this, download the checklist. It's a checklist, not some kind of virus or you know, stuff that you shouldn't look at. It's a checklist of best practices that I gathered throughout entire my career. Uh, and based on that, what you will be able to do is to uh, create your own processes that are repeatable uh, and can give you the advantage over your competitors in the, in the long run. And highly encourage you to do this. And basically that's all for today. But I have to tell that I lied to you. Yeah, I lied to you about the question at the very beginning because I know and uh, project management, VAPU, and a small city in Poland do have something in common, which is quite interesting, actually. They are all small things, but they have huge impact on our lives. Project management, as I said, I believe I proved it. Fiat 500 is a small city, a small car, sorry. And Tychy is actually a city in Poland that was producing many of Fiat models in Poland, and it had huge impact on Polish economy and our lives as I'm from Poland. So thank you for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I haven't wasted your time. Uh,
Oh, that's, yeah. You're right. I, I, I told you that I will forget. And I need to do it right now, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Paul. That was a very interesting talk again. And of course, we'll also have a nice gift for you. Okay, thank you. Here you go. And please, another round of applause for Paul as well.